Dear friends, ladies and gentlemen, good morning to you. I'm very happy to, to welcome the delegates from the from Turkey and Georgia, and of course, all the local ladies and gentlemen in in the audience, and I. And I wish to reiterate the importance of this international conference and wish the conference best of success. I believe there is a need to organize such conferences, and I believe it's it's a demand. It is a must given our daily life and the state of affairs in the geopolitical environment, given the complexity of geopolitical relations and the intensity, uh, I believe such cooperation format is indispensable. And we have to recognize the value and significance of such events. There are different formats of international relations. There, there are bilateral, multilateral formats. Uh, they are well justified, and I believe they're quite successful. On the other hand, on, when speaking on behalf of us, we have cooperation, a new formats of cooperation of countries cooperation formats and the contribution of the initiative. And today, as we see, there are study centers of three countries are represented here. And I believe the interaction is extremely important. And after the high level exchange that between the dignitaries and state leaders. Now, there is a, a theoretical element to that, and I believe the number of issues that have to be addressed in these three centers could be, could make a valuable input and contribution, and uh, this international conference will be a very important contribution, as you all know. Azerbaijan is engaging not just Turkey and Georgia, but also exploring other avenues for bilateral cooperation. Uh, Azerbaijan, Turkey, Turkmenistan, Azerbaijan, Georgia, Turkey. Uh, and there are many years that this, th those types of, of, of cooperation formats are, are also proving uh, their success. Uh, we, the, Baku Tbilisi Jehan, Baku Tbilisi Arzurum, such products as Baku Tbilisi Cars and Tama are also uh, a child and products of such a trilateral cooperation. In this direction, oh, I believe there are great uh, prospects for such type of cooperation, and we need to take it further to the next level. Let me uh, another form. Which is a four years ago. That's Azerbaijan, Iran, Russia, uh, North South Transportation Corridor Initiative that these countries are involved in. And, and we've signed a very important declaration. And I believe uh, that project is also a very promising one. It is a must, it is an imperative in our day and age. And I believe such cooperation formats are very important. And one of the very important aspects is that we have to take into account national interests, economic interests of those countries. And since those interests coincide, they come together, converge. And I believe that could be a driving force behind the success of these initiatives and let there be uh, no doubt and there could be no objections. Uh, Azerbaijan has stood firm on its position. Turkey is a NATO member nation, and Georgia has signed a association agreement with uh, European Union. But all of that 
does not prevent or preclude a very intensive cooperation. On the contrary, we see no problems uh, to that end. We believe that such a cooperation format boosts stability, security, and sustainable development in, in our region, and, and such formats do not oppose any other initiative or any other country. And therefore, such type of cooperation formats could have been introduced, and they are introduced in, in other different uh, parts of the world. So uh, let there be no doubt about the promising future of, of such format. For implementation of such formats, we are not y utilizing such conferences only, whereas this is uh, the fourth uh, conference. We hosted the inaugural one, and then it was followed by Georgia and Turkey, and now we're hosting this event once again for the fourth time, and this once again uh, testifies to the significance of, of such gatherings. I have already mentioned that these events, uh, these conferences are, are driven or pursued the agenda of fulfilling to the full extent national interests of our countries. We all know how sensitive our region is. Everyone here is, in one way or another, is involved with strategic studies, and you would recognize how important and how complex uh, the South Caucasus region is, especially in the early 21st century. There is no need to elaborate on significance of this issue, and therefore security, stability, and sustainable development is much needed for this sensitive part of the world for this process to be perpetual, to be enduring and lasting. Trilateral cooperation format is very important, but sometimes today uh, we are deprived of, of, of bilateral uh, ties given given Armenia's geopolitical ambitions, territorial claims, uh, and that's what precludes Armenia's involvement in, in such formats. Uh, after the collapse of the uh, several years prior to, to collapse of the Soviet Union on the Warsaw Pact, we were very much concerned about the uh, developments at the time, and, and we had our own views, and I was at the time And many, many of, 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 of you here thought that I was so naive. And we knew that uh, the collapse of the Soviet Union was imminent. And I thought that uh, we know that in the early 20th century, there was a federation created here in South Caucasus that involved Georgia, Armenia, Azerbaijan. Uh, and it was the it was the first time that these three republics were suggested as an international entity. So I thought after the collapse of the Soviet Union, perhaps such a confederation would have been established in our modern times. And, and I maybe naively thought that this confederation could have been established and would be a, a, a very lasting one. But unfortunately, with the number of geopolitical ambitions overwhelmed with certain issues, Armenia managed to occupy our lands. We all know which means were used. And it's not just Nagorno-Karabakh they're occupying today. The seven other districts around Nagorno-Karabakh, they maintain this occupation. And it's, it's a very paradox issue in the international relations that in every corner of the world, the international community and the leading nations of such community are demonstrating extremely negative, utterly negative attitude towards such issues. Some countries are immediately being punished, uh, sanctioned. But unfortunately, when it comes to Armenia, Azerbaijan, Nagorno-Karabakh conflict, we don't see such an attitude. And it's very difficult to explain why. Uh, even 
in the international community is struggling even to put forth a just and fair attitude on this uh, conflict. I believe it's utterly perilous, dangerous process. I believe for the world to come to this day, for the situation to be the way it is today, it's the fact that after collapse of the Soviet Union, the Warsaw Pact, in the wake of those processes, a one country, a one pole failed to uphold the international law, whether deliberately or not. The notion of justice should have been a driving force behind the processes, but they failed to do so, and today we have this very complex situation. It's, it's very difficult, not just for small countries such as Azerbaijan, but also for many other nations of the world. I'm sure all of you read about these news in the media. It's very unfortunate, but I have to mention this. If in the international relations, there is no justice of notion of fairness and justice, those other values are automatically relegated. Without justice, we cannot speak of about the system of other universal values. And I don't need I don't know whether those the rest of the values should be used as a weapon. I believe in the international community, on the international scene, the tensions are provoked by the prevalence of geopolitical ambitions. It's the direct outcome of that. And we have to, we should have been able to avoid that. Uh, you know, in the beginning of the 21st century, things look very dangerous, I believe, I don't know whether how appropriate that would be, but e end of the every century and start of another century start, start cycles of tensions, intensity, and confrontation. Let it be the late 18th, early 19th century, late 19th, early 20th, and late 20th, early 21st century. So if you, we observe the start, the end of every century, you will come to the same conclusion that tensions are always there and there are different reasons that lead uh, to those tensions. Indeed, the international community, all the countries have to work in concert in order to avoid that because as every new century ushers in more large-scale confrontations, more destruction, and unfortunately, that trend is ongoing. Why am I saying this? I believe that the, the ultimate task of the Centers for Strategic Studies and in shaping the international position, and they have this primary task of doing so, and they have the great contribution. So my ultimate wish and desire would be to see that these centers for strategic studies to be able to use their role to the maximum, to do their most and utmost in order to contribute to, to shaping of the international processes for their positions to be heard. because it's a very, a very bizarre trend today on the international scene. We, more often than not, we see leader of a certain country is, is not yet, has, has not yet matured as a, as a politician and as a top a governor or administrator, and he takes certain steps very erroneous steps. Uh, we've seen that in Europe, and I'm not surprised that it today, in our era, it's uh, one of the peculiar features that that is why I'm saying that the international, in the system of international relations, uh, the, the balance 
has been disrupted, and therefore centers for strategic studies have to be closely involved in order to restore that balance. And, and of course, the ultimate objective has to be ensuring security, stability, and sustainable development globally. Only then, even the smallest countries on the face of our planet, and even, even the largest ones, and their citizens would, would feel secure. And they would not have to take any measures to protect themselves, to defend themselves from certain emanating risks. If you noticed, only in two months' time, look what's taking place in Great Britain. And I believe the Centers for Strategic Studies have to read into the substance of such developments and convey their message across to the international community. And I believe that the, the process of migration and all these acts of terrorism, no one is looking into the true core fundamental reasons of those issues. I don't think there is a legitimate debate and discourse on this issue. It's very unfortunate, but we have to analyze certain illness in order to find the remedy, the cure. We cannot have this very superficial medical treatment. Uh, that would be uh, end of my remarks. In the meantime, I wish success to every delegate uh, to the Azerbaijan Center for Strategic Studies, for Turkish Center for Strategic Studies, and, and, and Georgia's Rondeli Foundation. For, wish success. And I wish success to each and every one of you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for your attention.